periodic table. So the periodic table helps us find trends in properties and elements. So um, as you can see here, you've got a very basic periodic table. Um, it's probably one of the old ones because it has the old um, electron configuration on it and I should probably get rid of that because we don't really care about electron configuration. Um, but nonetheless, this is what a periodic table looks like. Now, just for context, um, let me get rid of that. Um, oh, I don't have it up anymore. Um, I thought I might have had it up, but I don't. Um, the periodic table that you'll use all the time is a periodic table that you'll find on the uh, VCE chemistry um, data booklet. So the data booklet will have um, all of your sort of information that is necessary for um, the period for the periodic table, and so you're going to utilize that periodic table that's in there. Um, and I'll go through that later on in the class. But periodic table, um, the periodic table is organized in a very, very specific way. So it has, um, it's organized in increasing atomic number, which we talked about before as atomic number is the protons within an atom. So the elements are arranged in vertical columns called groups and the groups determine the number of valence electrons. So the valence electrons are the electrons in the outer shell. So group one has one valence electron, group two has two valence electrons, group three has three valence electrons and so forth. Um, the number of valence electrons determines many chemical properties, uh, but we don't need to worry about that right now. Horizontal roll, rows are called periods. Um, the period is equal to the number of occupied shells in the element. Now we don't need to worry too much about shells that's kind of being shafted from unit one, two, um, but it's important to understand the periodic table, understand that the periods of, uh, talk about shells. Um, so for example, sodium is in period three and it has three shells. So that's kind of how that works. So what's really important is actually understanding the trends. And these are the six trends that I want you to understand. So we have core charge, electronegativity, atomic size, first ionization, and it'd be metallic characteristics and reactivity. So these are the six trends you need to know. Um, these trends are usually caused by the number of valence shells and the number of um, valence electrons and the number of shells. Um, so don't worry too much about that side of things. I just want you to understand the trends. So if I move left on the periodic table or right on the periodic table or up on the periodic table or down on the periodic table, how things are going to change. So first of all, core charge. What is core charge? It's the measure of attractive forces felt by the valence shell electrons to the nucleus. So essentially what this means is that um, the number, the as we move down in the periodic table, the core charge increases because what happens is there's a stronger attractive force pulling in the electrons. And why do you think that is? Because as we move down on the periodic table, we actually get um, a higher number of protons. So as we move to the right, and as we move down really, um, because if we look at the periodic table, it kind of goes like this, and then it goes like this, and then this, and then this. So it's kind of like it's snakes. But it's always going that way. And it's always going that way. So it's always going, oh, my screen is really lagging. Apologies. Uh, but it's always going to the right and it's always going down. Very good. Um, so it's always going to the right and it's always going down. So as you can see there, you've got one up here, then you've got two, then you've got three, and then you've got four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So jumping back in, you have your core charge is essentially going to increase as you go to the right and as you go down. Then you've got electronegativity. So electronegativity is the measure of the ability of an atom to attract electrons towards it. So pretty much kind of the same thing. However, core charge is more about electrons that are within the atom. So if we think about core charge as um, the electrons that are already there, electronegativity is electrons that are not there. So electrons um, that are maybe free electrons floating out in an area or electrons that have been shared between molecules or electrons from a different molecule. Electronegativity is the ability for this molecule to attract those electrons from elsewhere. So it attracts electrons towards it. So as you move down the group, more shells means 
prefer the distance between the valence electrons and the nucleus decreasing electronegativity. But as you move across a period, um, the electrons are added to the outer shell and so the valence electrons are more attracted to the nucleus increasing electronegativity. So there's just the trends that you need to understand for electronegativity. Um, atomic radius is the measure um, of the um, size of the atoms. It would make sense that as you go down and you get more protons and you get more electrons, it would get bigger, but sometimes it's actually not true. It actually tends to be that as you move to the right, you get smaller because as more valence electrons are added and as more protons are added, you get smaller. But as you move down, it does get bigger. Now, why is that? Because you get an extra shell. Every time you move down, you get an extra shell. So you get an extra layer of electrons. So therefore, the radius is going to get a little bit bigger. But as you move across and you're in that exact same shell, things are going to get smaller because you've got the same number of layers, but the layers are just getting pulled in tighter, tighter, tighter. And then as we jump back down to the next shell, you get this extra shell added and it's just bigger than what everything was beforehand. But then as that one gets pulled down, pulled down, pulled down, pulled down, and then you get another shell out, and it gets bigger again. <laughs> then you have first ionization energy, um, and this is the energy required to move one valence electron from the outer shell of an element. Um, ionization is the process of removing any electron from an atom. Ionization forms a cation. So essentially, first ionization is removing the first electron from the outer shell. Um, this reflects how strongly valence electrons are attracted to the nucleus. Um, and then for reactivity and metallic properties, um, don't stress too much. We're going to go through metals in a little bit. Reactivity essentially doesn't really, it just depends on each individual molecule. And so thus, um, there's not really the biggest trends when it comes to that. Um, you'll just learn about individual atoms and their reactivity as you go through chemistry one, two.